This Week with Bob Mueller on News 2. This week. Benit was full of life. She had things to do on this earth. 25 teens have been shot in Nashville so far this year, an 80% jump over last year. It embraces the American principle that we should be keep families together. The Biden administration moves to protect half a million undocumented immigrants who are married to U.S. citizens and have been in the country 10 years or more. You know, we don't support violence against anybody, but the fact that people feel threatened isn't a basis for reinventing society. And the changes that we've seen would fundamentally remove the male-female sexual binary that underlies a lot of human existence. Tennessee's Attorney General applauds a court ruling against transgender inclusion in Title IX programs. More in our This Week cover story. What's going to be made available to the public? Why it's going to be made available? What's going to be withheld and why? That really hasn't happened yet. And Governor Lee on the ongoing legal fight over whether to make public the writings of the Covenant School shooter. Hello again and welcome to another edition of This Week. Tennessee's Attorney General Jonathan Scrametti calls a ruling against transgender inclusion in Title IX a win for the state. Governor Lee has allocated funds for additional state troopers, but he says more are needed. The Biden administration with a major immigration executive order. But we begin with nearly an 80 percent rise in teen shooting victims so far in 2024 compared to this time last year. Benique was full of life. She had things to do on this earth. She she was a dancer. Oh my God, she was an amazing dancer. The family of 17-year-old Ebonique Ferris is still trying to cope after she was shot and killed in North Nashville Sunday afternoon. 23-year-old Anthony Brooks is now behind bars after reportedly turning himself into police, claiming the shooting stemmed from an argument. Monday, Ebonique's family asked close friend Sparkle Johnson to speak on their behalf. No one expects to get shot <laughs> after an argument or a debate or, you know, differences of opinion or whatever it was. So the point is she didn't have to die. According to Metro Police, gunshot victims 13 to 17 years old are up nearly 79% compared to last year. Ferris's loved ones would like to see more resources for youth and especially asks others to lock their car doors and take any weapons inside. It's going to be more ch more parents burying their children than children burying their parents. Also in North Nashville, Curtis Bryant is one of three pastors who plan to sit down with the mayor next Monday, calling on him to fund a no weapons program for youth found with weapons or involved in violence. And go through education, uh, evaluation, and elevation for that youth, getting them to partner with themselves for success. Bryant urges the city to also invest in community centers for youth the way it once did. In our city, when we said we could not fund community centers, we built a football stadium, and it is right next to <laughs> the Juno Justice Center. In Nashville, Nikki McGee, News 2. Preventing accidental shootings, a new gun lock campaign sheds a light on the importance of safe gun storage. As News 2's Corey Johnson shows us, this comes as accidental shootings are still the leading cause of death among children in Tennessee. Light up those sights. A new video campaign by the State Department of Safety and Homeland Security as part of an ongoing statewide effort to promote safe storage among gun owners. It depicts how their free gun lock program can prevent tragedies from happening. Hey, hey, hey. This is why daddy locks his gun. <laughs> Guns are the leading cause of death among children in Tennessee. That's according to the latest State of the Child report. Voices for a Safer Tennessee, a safe storage advocacy group, says they applaud the new ad. That we really have to pull together as a community to get our arms around, and this ad is going to go a long way in spreading that message. State officials say the 15-inch lock secures most shotguns, rifles, pistols, and revolvers. It works by running through the barrel or the action of the firearm, preventing it from being fired. It also has a secure key deadbolt locking mechanism with a four-pin cylinder. So far this year, staff with Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt say they've already treated 18 children for gunshot-related injuries. When we look at the data 
<clears throat> of adults versus children, what we see is that the children's vital organs are really concentrated in a much smaller space. So the injuries are much more devastating, as well as the fact that particularly with higher powered weapons, the amount of soft tissue damage that we see in children is far higher than any that we see in adults. The hospital averages about 70 of these injuries a year involving children or around five per month. We've become unfortunately very used to it, but also very good at it too. You can get a free gun lock in all 41 counties in Middle Tennessee at locations listed on safestoretn.com. Corey Johnson, News 2. The U.S. Surgeon General says there is a mental health crisis among young people and social media is a major factor. As Alex Stone shows us, the nation's top doctor wants tobacco and alcohol style warning labels on Internet sites like Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy is calling for warning style labels on social media platforms similar to those for cigarettes and alcohol. In an op-ed in the New York Times, Dr. Murthy writes, quote, a Surgeon General's warning label, which requires congressional action, would regularly remind parents and adolescents that social media has not been proved safe. He says cigarette box warning labels helped dramatically reduce tobacco usage. Murthy points to data showing teens who spend three or more hours a day on social media face double the risk of anxiety or depression. The average user that age was on social media for almost five hours every day. The big question we have is what exactly is the warning label going to say? Because if I'll tell you anything about teens, if you give them pointed directions and information, they're more likely to act on it. So maybe it could include things like, hey, watch out for your privacy, be aware of cyberbullying, be a good digital citizen and take breaks. Murphy has repeatedly sounded the alarm about excessive social media use. Social media has not been a positive experience for many young people. I think it's a trauma that young people are experiencing in their lives in terms of violence in their communities, uh, in terms of racism and discrimination. The White House is calling on Congress to pass legislation to hold social media platforms accountable. There is a mental health crisis. The Surgeon General's announcement is about reminding parents and also about reminding kids the risk of using uh, of using social media. A spokesman for the Tech Trade Association, NetChoice, called Murthy's proposal an oversimplification and said parents, not the government, should handle the unique needs of their children. Alex Stone, ABC News, Los Angeles. The worker shortage that's impacted everything from restaurant service to police response times could mean a tax increase tripling the wheel tax in Wilson County. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry asked where the money would go. If you're going to continue to retain and attract quality employees, you're going to have to pay for them. In a Wilson County Commission's Budget Committee, Finance Director Aaron Maynard explained that at this point, county services like the Sheriff's Department cannot afford to lose another person. In a one-on-one -on -one interview, Maynard tells me two years ago, Wilson County was closing ambulance stations due to a lack of people and pay. So it's extremely important to stay on top of employee compensation if you're going to be able to provide the services to the citizens of the county. Maynard says the public often asks for alternatives to increasing property taxes. Now commissioners are looking at one. So I think some county commissioners decided that a wheel tax would be uh, something to consider. As it stands now, the current wheel tax is $25. But if the resolution were to pass, a vehicle registration could cost $50 or $75 by January 1st, 2025. Maynard tells me if the tax was increased by an extra $25, it would raise $3 million. And if increased by $50, city employees would benefit by about $7 million. We're all under tremendous inflationary pressure. Including, uh, including wages. At 7 o'clock tonight, the resolution will be presented in a public hearing at the Wilson County Courthouse in order to move forward with the proposal. The resolution would need to be approved in two meetings by two-thirds of the county commission. We all wish that there were ways to do it that didn't require additional revenue, but um, from my seat, I don't see it. In Wilson County, Caitlin Quisenberry, News 2. Now to our this week cover story, the Tennessee Attorney General's office calls it a big win as a judge temporarily blocked the Biden administration's Title IX expansion meant to protect LGBTQ plus students. So what exactly does that mean and what happens now? 
This is my Owen sat down with Tennessee's attorney general to discuss the ruling. Tonight, in a 93-page opinion, a judge ruling the U.S. Education Department overreached in expanding the definition of sex to include gender identity. Attorney General Scrimetti calls this a big win. The ruling paused the regulations in several states, including Tennessee. It was supposed to go into effect August 1st, and we're talking about really big changes to the law. So for the schools, for the universities to get up to speed, to train all their people, to develop new compliance policies, it would have been a huge lift. Title IX prohibits sex discrimination in educational programs that receive federal funding. President Joe Biden proposed new rules, broadening the scope of the law to prohibit unequal treatment of pregnant students and discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. You know, we don't support violence against anybody, but the fact that people feel threatened isn't a basis for reinventing society. And the changes that we've seen would fundamentally remove the male-female sexual binary that underlies a lot of human existence. Skirmetti argues protections for transgender students like access to locker rooms and bathrooms matching their gender identity come at the expense of privacy and conflict with a number of state laws. If people are concerned about where the law is now, pulling a fast one and trying to get the federal agencies to say the law is something different that's not an enduring way to change the law. You have to work the process. But advocates say Biden's rules would have created a more welcoming and inclusive environment. What we're forgetting is that this is not only protecting the students, but the countless number of LGBTQ plus teachers within our district, teachers that put so much effort into providing a quality education for us. During a public comment period at tonight's Williamson County Board of Education meeting, community members addressed the issue. The simple reason I am here is biological boys do not belong in locker rooms rooms, bathrooms, and on the sports field with females. Statistically, trans folks are much higher risk of being bullied and physically abused than their peers. These kids have much higher bladder and kidney issues because many of them are too afraid to use the restroom and hold it all day. And the attorney general explained this injunction does not mean this is the end of the discussion. There is still a current lawsuit on the table. And depending on that ruling, the AG's office is prepared to appeal a judgment if necessary. Stay with us this week continues in a moment.